Okay? Because here's what happens. What you resist persists. What you step into dissipates. Once you step into the thing you once feared, it dissipates. And now you can finally live up to the potential that you, you are been given by God but are not living as you were meant to live. If you believed in yourself as much as I believe that you can do this business, you would be more successful faster. So I want to challenge you to really, really practice blind faith. Blind faith that the actions that you are taking every single day is going to lead you directly to the goal that you have set for yourself. Blind faith. Let's practice blind faith because, listen, there's a lot of times in this business where there's doubt, there is distraction, and there is disappointment. And we have to destroy those three Ds, and we do that with having blind faith that what we are doing is going to impact our community in a huge way. And with that, speaking of in, uh, impacting the community in a huge way, I'm so excited. I have got the land shark himself. Brent Bowers here. Brent, say hello to everybody. Wow. Hello. Hello. This is this is crazy. This is amazing. And the three Ds, I, I was just talking about this yesterday mm -hmm. with somebody, and it's just I needed to hear that as well. Yep. So amazing. I'm glad to be here. Welcome to the Progress Not Perfection show. Today in the opening here, we're going to be breaking down how Brent Bowers here is making $17,000 a month passive income from vacant land. Let me say that again, 17,000 a month. How do you do that with vacant land? There's no way, how do you get rent on vacant land? There's no, people aren't living there. What, what is, how does that happen? How does that work? We're gonna show you step-by-step step exactly how to do it. Not only that, he's gonna show you how to pull it up and to find the best markets to go after for vacant land. It is an incredible approach. It's an approach that uh, Brent has taught me. We've implemented it into our business. We did this years ago um, and it's it, it absolutely works. It is a phenomenal way to start building up your experience in this business. And uh, we're gonna do this, we're gonna break this down into baby steps. So make sure that uh, you stick around for the, well, for the full 90 minutes, but we're gonna, we're gonna let Brent loose here and he's gonna break down his section here. Not only that, but guys, the show would not be complete without Rafael Cortez and Mike Mahoney here, here to <laughs> here to bring energy. The Rothman's getting back together, bro. Here to, here to bring enthusiasm and here to answer your questions. So let's jump right into it, Brent. How do we go and lock up vacant land deals? How do you do it? Step by step. So before I get into that, can I share a little bit about why yes. I went towards vacant land? Because when, when I started wholesaling houses in 2016, I was an army officer, military officer, getting worked like 13 hours a day, always training, always in the field, always preparing for deployments. I was preparing for that, my next deployment, and I was desperately searching for a way you know, out of the military because I had you know, a, a brand newborn baby at home, and we had a, another one coming very soon after that. So I was just... I mean, most people have two motive, like there's one or the other, one motivation or the other. It's, you know, away from pain or towards pleasure. Right. Mine was away from pain. Sure. I wanted to be out of pain. I, I think most of us. Always yeah. gone. Now the pleasure came, but I was worried about the pain and the pain was one more deployment, one more time away from home. I'm like, my son turned out like he was a year and a half old. I only got to see him about four months of his life. So mm -hmm. I was searching for answers, just like everyone listening to this right now, the 114 people on live right now searching for answers and i was half hazardly wholesaling houses under sure. the things you teach so well at ttp yep but there was so much competition i was i was spending so much money and mail and i wasn't actually spending my money it was capital one's <laughs> money uh, but i had to pay that back in american express and i stumbled on land and i was like you know why don't i just mail the tax delinquent list the, the people that are not paying their back taxes 
for their properties, why don't I just mail them this beautiful tribe postcard that we have mm -hmm. and see what happens? So I did. I mailed 687 of those, yep. and my phone absolutely exploded. This was back early 2016. Yep. So I've further perfected this, you know, and, and just just <laughs> blood, sweat, tears, lots of mistakes to turn it into the program exactly we're going to show the the audience today. Awesome, so, Matt. Let's get the whiteboard. Let's get let's right. break this thing down. Yep. All right. So you, you no, 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 just, All right, just grab so, it from here. Oh, wow. This looks amazing. Yeah. Way better on camera. So, <laughs> you know, you might notice little things like the capital and the lowercase. I promise that was done for a purpose right. so you can really see it. No, it was actually done by accident. So but here. Playground. So the first thing is picking your area. And we're going to show you today with Redfin exactly how I choose a new area, how I go into a new area. Some areas Redfin's not available in. So we just use Zillow. It's the same exact thing and it's the same exact measure. You, you were looking for clusters of land that has sold within you know, the last six months. I start with one week because it's quite overwhelming looking at the past six months because there's a lot of solds. So I start right there and I'll, sh I'll give you an example of that. I'm gonna do it right now. Yep. All right, so let's just pick an area, Orlando, Florida, just mm -hmm. so we're on Redfin by the way. Um, and if, if you are in an area, and I, I recommend starting with about two and a half hours, a two and a half hour radius of where you currently live, mm. because that gives you the, the, the ability to put your boots on the ground. It gives you the ability to go and check out the land. Any, anytime I struggled selling a piece of land in the very beginning, it was land I'd never looked at. Sure. Um, and, and you could totally sell the stuff without looking at it, but I want to stack the odds in your favor. So Orlando's about one and a half hours from where I currently live. So let's just go to Orlando, Florida. So it's gonna pull up Orlando, Florida. Right now it's showing everything for sale. I wanna see the solds only, so I'm gonna click sold. And then I wanna look at the last week, sold in the last week. Done, and then let's go to home type. I want only land here. Mm. I'm gonna select land, done. And then I'm gonna to go to the filters and I wanna double check and make sure that the solds are selected, land only, and within one week. And then now I wanna see what's out there. So I'm going to X this Orlando out because I want to scroll out because I'm not really particular inter particularly interested in Orlando right now. I'm looking for clusters of solds. So I'm going to keep scrolling out until I see that. Well, the first thing that caught my eye was right here in Palm Bay, Florida. That's one area. Mm. I like that area. And let me show you why I like it is because in the last seven days, there's like what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, Incredible. thirteen souls in the last seven days. Why why do you go just seven days, Brent? Why not a month? Why not a year? Why not you know what I mean? Like seven days feels like very recent. Yeah, it's super recent. It's it's extremely recent, like seven days ago. My next step is to go thirty days because I wanna see, okay. Is that just a fluke? Did someone just come through here and buy everything? Right. So let's see what, what happened in the last month. And really here, I'm just looking for demand. Oh my gosh, look at that. Whoa. I don't want to mm. go out and find a product over here. Now, granted, I could probably get a massive discount right. in an area like this. And I'm, I love, love, love buying land on the outskirts because mm -hmm. that's the stuff I get for 10, 20, 30 cents on the dollar. And I sell or finance that for 30 years. Let's not get there yet. Okay. Yeah, let's let's right. not jump ahead. All right. Let's let's, okay. let's keep where market. Keep so me on target. A, this is how you pick your target. This, right. is, this is how you pick your market. This is your playground. Right there. That would be one of my markets right there. So what do you do? Do you pull the city? Do you pull the zip code? Do you put do you do a map yep. search? What do you do? I'm gonna go back to one week because this is overwhelming right now, and I don't have 30 minutes to click on every single yeah, one sure. of these. So let's just go to one week, and here's my next step. Now that that I found a hot market, and this is just one example. You know, there's multiple on here, multiple in the in Florida, in the United States. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to click on every single one of these because I now want to see not just a hot zip code because that's my hot area. I, I now want to see what size parcel of land mm. is in high demand. Okay. So let's just click on each one of these really quickly. 45,000. Looks 000. like they're all 10,000 square foot lots. There we go. 10,000 square foot. This one, uh, that's 1.13. All right. Let's click on the next one. 10,000 square foot. Why does the size of the lot matter? Because I want to see what is in most demand in this area because that's what I'm going to start with. Okay. I'm going to go next to propstream.com <clears throat> yep. and I'm going to find the zip code, which is 32905. Yep. I'm only going to pull in 32905 because I want to break this down as micro as possible because it could be, get very, very overwhelming. You know, How do we eat an elephant? One bite at a time. But I'm going to start with the very tip of the tail mm -hmm. and keep moving up. <laughs> so I'm going to keep on clicking these mm. and it looks like... It's 10,000, oh, there's a half acre, all right. So let's see what the $50,000 one is. 
0.44 acres, 10,000 square foot. So between 10,000 10, and half an acre is so like a sweet spot. I'm seeing more 10,000 square foot. Okay. So I'm going to go directly for that because I know that if I get a piece of land mm -hmm. under 50 cents on the dollar, I will get that property under contract under a purchase agreement. I now have an asset under contract for less than 50 cents on the dollar that I know I can sell. So if the average next, I'll figure out what the average is by yeah. clicking on those and, you know, dividing by the sales price to the square foot. And we'll figure out the average is about $3 and 59 cents a square foot. The only reason why I can do that in my head is because I've seen 10,000 square foot properties sell for $35,000 so many times it's pretty easy to figure it out. Right. So 35,000 is $3 and 50 cents a square foot. Use a calculator. I didn't start there. Uh, but what's half of 350? So 175 ish. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I need a calculator for That's that. Good. But so I'm going to offer a dollar 75 for every 10,000 square foot lot in this area to people that are out of state mm. and that have owned it for at least 10 years. Always out of state? Not always. If I if I catch some fish out of this pond, yeah. if I mail like let's just say 700 out of state owners yep. and give them an offer at 50 cents on the dollar and I get a few. Oh, you bet your you bet your beans. I'm going to mail the entire county. You bet next. your beans. You're not getting yeah. my beans. <laughs> I'm going to mail the entire I'll bet county. All of my beans. <laughs> all the beans. I said that because right, so, Raphael's here. So go here, go here. Okay. All right. Let's do it. So no, no, no. You're here. You're on the microphone. So we'll pull the list on PropStream if it, they want it. Yeah. Then what happens? So then I will go and use a direct mail piece. And are we offering that today? The land offer letter is, yes. is basically what it is. It's yeah. a land offer letter. I give the exact offer price for this piece of land, what I just mentioned, 50 cents on the dollar. Mm -hmm. Now, is it always 50 cents on the dollar? No. We're going we're gonna to test the market by sending <laughs> letters to sellers. How do you test the market? You got to talk to landowners. And if they don't take, if they don't take the bait, we're going to have to put a different kind of bait on it or a little bit more, maybe 60 cents on the dollar. Because at the end of the day, we're just trying to find this land at a discount and sell it to one of these guys that have bought in the last seven days. Mm -hmm. And we could do things like that. Who's buying all this land? Yeah. And let's talk to those guys. Yeah. Maybe they wanted at a discount. All right, let's keep moving. All right, so keep talking. So you send out the letter and then... The land offer letter is accepted. That's the specific offer that we're sending to Mr. and Mrs. Mary Jones. And they accept the offer. And here's what's really cool. They will sometimes fax it back to us. And people laugh at me all the time and they don't believe that I have a fax number and get money on fax machines it's it's not really a fax number it's like comes right to electronic an email. right yeah, yeah. myfax.com it's seven dollars a month yep. or ten dollars a month now but so people you send people offers they sign it and send it back to you yeah they'll, they'll sign it and email it back to us they'll fax it back to what's us. the percentage of people that you just send a blind offer to at 50 percent that that send it back versus they want to talk to you and, and and see if you're legit yeah the people that actually accept our offer now 90% of them will send it, sign it. Sometimes they'll forget their phone number. And just send it back. Yeah, and send it back. Whether And it's funny, most of them will send it via fax. It's so crazy because think about it. We're mailing to people like 50 and 60 years old. Yeah. And they have fax <laughs> machines or they know where there's a fax machine at Staples. And the other 10%. That's wild. That accept that it will call. Wild. Right. And, and sometimes they'll want to hire offer. They'll say, hey, you know, your offer's a little insulting. Yep. I would take this or, hey... F you. Right. Because you got to expect that. The disappointments. Sure. Those do come. People are so angry. So you send out a thousand of these letters. How many come back? Um, as far as offered, it depends. When we go into a new area, it, we're lucky to get a few of them accepted. So a thousand letters, if I get three offers accepted, that means I struck gold. Right. Because when do we ever know? Like on the outskirts where I was showing on, on, on a Redfin here, mm -hmm. on the outskirts, I can offer a little bit less. Like right. if the land's worth 10,000, I might get away with... 30 cents on the dollar, maybe? How do you determine that? 30 just, to 50? Just demand. Like if, if it's do you a, just test? Test. Yeah. It's really, you've got to send letters to landowners or talk to them or call them. Like you own the list, right. TTP, you can just mail them and call them and text them. Yep. So, so the offer comes back, what happens next? All right, so next we will go into our, our due diligence and research as well as, as uh, mm -hmm. negotiation. Let's get the board up, Matt. There we go. All right, so we'll do some due diligence. We'll do some research. We'll we'll look at the market because just keep it up, Matt. Sometimes we make a mistake. Right. Sometimes we offer too much. Right. Sometimes we offer too little and hit a home run. Mm -hmm. uh, it happens both ways. Uh, sometimes people call and say, "Look, you offered, 
you know, this much, we would like this much, and they're out of their minds, and we just keep them on our follow-up. We'll touch base with them 10, 12, sometimes 30 times, and eventually they'll sell to us right. because there's not, a, there's, not, there's not a lot of competition. There's not a lot of people doing this, and the ones that are, they're not returning phone calls. Right. And, and once we figure out that it's a good property, we do the due diligence and the research, we also <laughs> we, we plan to negotiate, and we use pretty much the tribe negotiation tool, the script, mm -hmm. we call it. We ask them about the land. Then we ask them if we could pay all cash and close quickly, what is the lease you'd be willing to take? Right. And then we hush our mouth. Mm -hmm. We don't say another word. We, we mute our cell phones because I'll, I'll, like, I want to fill the air with, with communication. It's a, just a weird silence. And then they will think about it. Sometimes they'll say, well, you sent the offer. Will you pay that? And you know, sometimes we will. Yeah. We're just asking if we could, if we got it done quickly and we close quickly, what's the least you would take? And we ask it again. Mm -hmm. We just change the words a little bit. Sometimes we have to ask this five or six times. This is never perfect. And then when they finally give us an answer, well, you offered six thousand. I could probably maybe do it for a little less, but maybe fifty five hundred. But my wife's ready to go on the cruise. We need about five thousand dollars for that. Well, we probably about five thousand. And then you, then you really have to go for the gold. Mm -hmm. Is that the best you could do? You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the best you're willing to do? And we, yeah. I, we say it with the absolute sincerity. Like, I mean, I think I just made up a word. That's good. But um, we, we, we're as sincere as possible right. when I say this or when my acquisition manager says this. Because we don't want to come off as being rude. We want to come off as the solution provider, the expert in the industry. Mm -hmm. And we're really looking for problems we can solve with these landowners. Because yeah. at the end of the day... We're never going to force it. So anybody. you negotiate it, you get it at a good price, you got two options. Yeah. Right? So, and yeah. by, by the way, guys, when you're looking at this board, that when you see a sign there and right below it where you say flip there, that's going to come into play a lot later. These right here. Right? Keep going, Brent. All right. So now that we've got a price that we know is a home run, we've got this, we're getting this asset under contract for, for a major discount. We will now send a purchase agreement, which I, I forgot to put that on the board. We'll send them a purchase agreement via email or DocuSign. Sometimes they'll mail it back to us because they have no way to physically do it. Right. Sometimes we'll have to mail it to them because I mean, you just, we just have to meet our sellers where they're at. Mm -hmm. And then the next step we'll do, if you look back at the board, is we're going to figure out if we're going to sign this contract. Like, hey, Brent Daniels, I see that you're buying tons of land in the yep. 32905 zip code. I've got one for 15000 I see you're buying for around 30000 Hey, you, you mind just sending me twenty five grand for this? I make a quick $10,000 assignment fee. Or I'll buy it I'll, and close on it, basically. Mm -hmm. We'll buy it and list it with my land specialist realtor. How do you find the land specialist realtor? You click on every single one of these and see who is selling all the land. You call Bob Jones and say, hey, man, what do you think you could sell this lot for? Yeah. I, I, it's, it's like literally power lines and water running right in front of it. Oh, that's a $45,000 one. Great. I'm buying it for 15. Let's get this thing listed. And he might already have a, like a pocket buyer for it. Usually they do. So those are yeah. the close and flip. Yep. And then my preferred method. Here we go. Is I buy this lot that's, that's worth 45,000 for 15,000. And then I put it, we market it. We still list it with Bob Jones. Mm hmm we, we put it on Craigslist and Facebook and put signs out, and we sell it for 45000 at 12% interest for 30 years, and we make more in interest than we do on the sales price. Right. Like and that's, and you, put, you get a down payment, right? Yeah. So you're getting the down payment, Dr. I'm glad you're keeping me on, on, on target right. here. Yeah, down payment. So we're going to get a down payment for at least you know, five to $10,000. And my, people are thinking, oh, my gosh, you didn't get your money out of this. Well, let's just say that I borrowed the $15,000 from my mother-in-law. She loves making 9%. Mm -hmm. I used to pay her 6%, but she's really getting savvy on me. So <laughs> she sees what we're making. So we're paying her 9% on 15 grand. Yep. And now I sell it to Bob Jones' buyer. My, Bob Jones is a realtor. He's got a buyer that will pay 12% all day on 45 grand. Mm -hmm. So I get a down payment for like- Who are these buyers? Why, why would anybody buy a yeah. piece of land with nine to twelve percent owner financed interest on it. Yeah, I mean, sometimes these buyers are, you know, Mark and Mary Smith. They want to build a house out there one day. Uh, just in one of the areas, it was uh, there's a lot of Latinos in these areas because they're building these houses. Mm -hmm. They see our sign that we Google Translate in Spanish, mm -hmm. like land for sale, two fifty a month, oh, yeah. 
phone number and they call it and say, hey, I would love to own land in this yeah. area. One day I'm going to build a house here and those guys buy it. And here's what's really cool is eventually they'll pay us off because in like five to seven years, they're going to get a construction loan from a bank. Right. And the bank's going to be like, all right, we're going to pay you off. Your 250 a month is gone. But all that was pretty much interest for like the first five or seven years. Yeah. So it's, it's just incredible. I love seller financing it because next month I know what I'm going to make. And how much do you have in notes currently on these pieces of land that you sell or finance? So all of them combined, we have about 2.2 million promised to pay to us. And that's the, and then they're paying 17,000. Yeah. That works out to about 17,000 a month. Passive cash flow. Passive cash flow comes in every and single month. And how much of your money do you have left in this land? Uh, so total. Cause you get money back. So he gets yeah. money back with the down payment. He's trying to get as much as possible. You're trying to cover the actual purchase price yep. with your down payment. That's, that's a home run there. Right. Yes. Uh, but if you can't, how much money do you have left in that you've invested? Now you're making 17,000 a month. So roughly and you have a $2 million asset, yeah. $2.2 $2 million asset in the notes. We've, we've spent about $440,000 purchasing land, uh -huh. but here's, what's really cool is it's not really my money. It comes from the assignment fees and the closings. That's what we were talking about. And these, the monthly these cash flow. Right here. These. Yeah. The circles you made. So it's, as we assign the contract for, we buy it for 15, we sell it for 25, we just got a $10,000 assignment fee. Yep. That money goes back into the pot of land buying and purchases that $10,000 lot that's worth 30,000. So it's, it's, it's constantly building itself. And then the 17 grand a month, we're not using that and going on cruises or anything. That money's going back in but and he, buying investments. He, here's what I love. You're not being a landlord. No. You're being the bank. The banks always win. Guys, don't get this twisted. It's not the landlord. It's not the people that own a bunch of doors that win in the real estate business. It, it is the bank. Every time, the bank is the top, top, top of the pyramid on all of these. So what Brent's doing is he's going out there. He's sending letters to people, and you can get them at thelandshark.com uh, forward slash LOL. Yep, the land right? Can you put that on there, Alejandro? LOL, you can get the same exact letter. He's giving it to you for free here because we love you guys. You can send this out to these property owners and they either fax it or literally sign it and send it back to you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's we, we can't overcomplicate this. I right. still don't believe it happens because it happens every day. <laughs> right. But it, it it's, it's not complicated. <clears throat> it really is not. Awesome. So we're going to crack this thing open, guys. That is an overall view of everything. I didn't want you getting too nitty gritty. Raf's got some questions, maybe Mike, and then we'll open it up to the audience. Just one quick, uh, one quick question in, in terms of marketing. I was going to ask about marketing campaigns and, and I mean, how much does that run on average? Like if you wanted to hit a yeah. thousand people, right? Budgeting for the marketing is a big thing in wholesaling. So what, yeah, what would you be looking at? A thousand landowners or yeah. on the sell side? So Average 50 to 75 cents a letter. Oh, okay. Cool. Nice. The awesome. high end, about a dollar. And then you can do it yourself for 50 cents a pop. Awesome. Let's open this up. Remember, there are three main points to, this, to the show, three main factors to the show, foundations of the show. Number one, give you the support that you need and answer your questions. Number two, to celebrate your successes. All right. If you have locked up a deal, if you've sold a deal, if you've made your first call, if you've driven for dollars for the first time, we want to ring this victory bell. I think the record's like 22 times in 90 minutes. It's absolutely incredible. We go bananas. The guys get crazy. It's a lot of fun. So make sure you're putting in the comments any success that you have because we want to give you recognition. And the third point is to squad up in the comments section. Squad up. Let everybody know where you're doing business, what you're excited about, if you have any special specialties, if you know how to do creative finance, if you're doing land deals, if you're just wholesaling, if you're doing flips, if you have money that you want to lend, let us know. Put it in the comments section and start squatting up. So let's crack this thing open because I think that we have plenty of questions uh, for you to get going. Oh, my favorite, favorite question. Yeah. Want me to yeah, read it? that's you. Yeah. All right, John Johnson, thanks for submitting the question. Hey, everyone, can we talk about how to find land buyers? So one of my favorite ways right now, I, this is like, there's always, I feel like once a month, I get excited about one way to find land, land buyers. Yeah. Last month, it was signs that I already talked about, like just simple signs. Like I go to Home Depot and buy the PVC or the corrugated white, yeah. white plastic. And you, you guys saw my ugly handwriting on that board already. I write land for sale, 
will finance phone number. We get buyers with that like crazy. I mean, 10 or 12, 15 signs that stop signs and red lights. Those things are super easy to do. Or What do you say on them? Like, land for sale and like the number four. Right. 250 a month, phone number. Or must sell land, 38K. Yep phone number awesome you know things yep. like that so, so that's and one way can i ask so bowers and, and we got two brands yeah. so i'll say bowers so do you hire is there like people you can hire to do that for you or do you actually go out and do it yourself yes i'm so glad you asked that yep. great question because here's the thing you will like we want to own businesses not have another job so you might already have another job so go on buy sell groups and and find people for this or you might be two go and a half what th- groups i'm sorry buy sell groups on facebook i'm getting i'm like getting excited about this Good. i'm like trying to talk faster yeah. than what my mind is letting it come out <laughs> but uh so i go and hire people on buy sell groups facebook buy sell groups because sometimes you're like three hours away from this land and you can't drive up there on a random right. wednesday so go on a buy sell group like buy sell marketplace buy sell trade like yard sale buy sell trade groups and just put looking to hire someone to help me with signs Mm. we pay people like like 50 bucks to do this yeah so that's cheaper than what you can actually drive there for and you tell them exactly what you want exactly how to do it and we 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 show them exactly what to buy the magnum marker that you write with and Mm -hmm. how to put them out they actually write the signs yeah buy the signs write the signs put them out exactly take pictures of them everything yes you can do that with uh there's simple crew, simple okay. crew, and like it geo targets the signs. It's really cool. Um, the Is there any way to find buyers online, like right now? Yes. I have a deal right now. I got to sell. I haven't put out signs. I can't wait. I'm in my inspection period. I got to sell it right now. That's the flavor of the month that I'm so excited about. Last month it was signs for me. Right. This month is online. I don't leave my office. Like I don't even put shoes on for this. So I go to Batch <laughs> Leads. Dot io or yep. batch leads brent whatever you yep. want to call it nope. um That's good. amazing site i can go to this three no three two nine zero five zip code and put in ten thousand square foot lots cash buyer there's a quick filter mm-hmm. so it's like at the bottom left yep. you hit the quick filter and you find the cash buyer section click that and then you want to go to property characteristics so you need a subscription to batch leads it's super yeah. you can get like a seven day free trial and try this out but you, you click the quick filter, then cash buyer, then property characteristics, and then we want vacant land. Now we want the size. The size, we were looking at 10,000 square foot. So we can do like 7,000 square foot to half acre. Mm-hmm. And then we want to see those cash buyers that have purchased in the last three months. So when did interest rates go up? Like three months ago, right? Mm-hmm. We want to know the, the players on the field right now because that's who <clears throat> we want to play. So we're going to find those guys. Awesome. You click on, you add them all. Like, let's just say there's ten or twelve or thirty of them. Yeah. That have bought in the last like last three months, and then you skip trace them. You get the phone number for these guys and give them a call. I'm looking for the LLCs. Awesome. Hey, Bowers, Padre, let's put the runner for batch leads, please. So, and and Bauer, so you do this obviously, right? But you also teach people how to do this, right? So, for anybody who's new and and maybe has never met you before, where would they go if they wanted to work with you to actually learn how to do this for themselves? wholesalinginc.com forward slash land. All right. Or the landsharks.com. Schedule a call. Like, join the community. And that's land sharks, plural. Yes, the okay. land sharks, plural. Yes. Cool. We'll put it in the show notes here. Uh, Christopher, on the agreement, what do you put on the purchase agreement? The parcel number? Yeah. Yeah. We so A lot of times there's not an address to vacant raw land. Right. Unless they've, like, filed for a building permit. So yeah, we put the APN, the assessor's parcel number. We also put the legal description. And here's what's cool is these landowners, sometimes they own multiple parcels and there's, there's, there's softwares with like Pebble that will put multiple offers and multiple parcels. But Mm -hmm. most of the time these guys know that, okay, this is the vacant raw land we own out in Colorado. Right. So, yeah. Well, I'll, we were sending out letters doing this. I, I changed. The only reason we stopped doing it is because Jeremy became my disposition manager and he got too busy and he was really running our land uh, department. But we, we got three pieces of land. I think it was like a total of like 16 acres. I mean, it was real rural mm-hmm. for free. Yeah. They just owed like a couple hundred dollars on their property taxes. And they're like, <laughs> we'll deed this over to you if you pay the property taxes. It's crazy that people do that. And I'm that. like, what? 
yeah. three properties for absolutely free. Yeah. I mean, we only sold them for like I think we made a total of like five or six thousand on all three of them. But if you're looking to get an extra thousand, two thousand, three thousand, five thousand dollars a month, get out of your job, start replacing your income so that you can get into this business full time. This is a really, really, really smart way to do it. Yeah, I mean, really smart way. We got two parcels. I love it. For- That's why he's a wholesaling ink coach. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's so. I think that the land strategy is powerful. I don't think anybody's really, uh, really pa- as passionate about it as you. That's that's teaching it and coaching it. And um, you know, the, you gave the whole blueprint. He gave it all away, guys. Like I, I mean, that's the whole blueprint. You can see what he sends out. You can see how he sends it out to him. He, he's going to tell you how to sell these things. That's fantastic. But if you're looking for accountability and next level and um, and a community, that's the land sharks. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. we awesome. got two free parcels last month in Pennsylvania. Incredible, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, free land contract. Yeah, for real, Brandon. They just literally sign it and send it back to you, like it comes in the mail, and you have a signed. Um, you have. A, I think one of them sent the deed. Signed. <laughs> yeah. I swear. And you guys made five grand on that. Yeah, that's crazy. It's yeah. free money, and I mean five grand. Those, like, there was some that I made maybe six hundred dollars on, or yeah. a thousand. Uh, the, the, like the fifth one, I'm still getting paid today. Right. That was one from 2016. It's $547 a month. I maybe have $300 into this parcel of land. Mm-hmm. I sold it for 36000 So y- they're just these, these little base hits really add up. Small wins really add up into something phenomenal. But and it looks like these areas, these look like they're in communities. These don't look like they're the real raw, in the middle of nowhere land that don't have any kind of utilities to them, and they don't have anything. These yeah. look like they're they're in town. So do you find it better to, to go after these properties that are kind of in the outskirts of town where they have access to utilities, or do you think that the be- better deals are like the ones in the middle of nowhere where people like – you know, want to be preppers yeah. and they want to like go out there and just, you know, light fires and shoot guns and do whatever. You yeah. know what I mean? Actually, like, it, I got a follow up <laughs> question along those lines. So, so Brent Bowers, it, improved property, utilities, other things. Is that for you an asset or a liability? I see it as an asset because that's something I can flip, assign the contract for really quick <clears> cash <throat> and then buy the stuff that I'm really excited about. What you just mentioned, the recreational stuff where like we have 117 lots in, in Arizona, a place no one's ever even heard about yeah. that we bought for $300 a parcel and we sell for 4,000 a parcel. And these, these seller financing deals last forever, but that's the stuff where there's no restrictions and we sell it almost every single week. Right. You know, right. that's, so it's incredible. It's both. Is Brandon asked a great question here. How long is your inspection period and how are you explaining your due diligence to the seller? Can you go through how you do due diligence on the land? Absolutely. So on average, most of the time I just do a 30 day uh, purchase agreement with a 15 day inspection. We can pretty much do it in 15 days. There have been some times where like larger, more expensive, like multi million dollar parcels. We're going for like six months. So I didn't start with the multi-million dollar stuff. I started with like the, literally the couple hundred or the thousand dollar stuff. So, right. And then it just gave me the confidence and it's like, it just continued to build on itself. So the, just the average common stuff that I just showed you on Redfin, that's like a 30 day purchase agreement with the 15 day inspection period. What am I checking for due diligence? I'm having the title insurance company, not the title company, it's called a title insurance company because they're gonna give me an insurance policy that if they miss any liens or any encumbrances or back taxes or breaks in the chain of title, all those things. We're also getting down to the nitty gritty and I have my virtual assistant in the Philippines do this, but she calls the local utility company, like the Palm mm-hmm. Bay Utility Company, Florida Power and Light, even though there's nothing on the land because sometimes there's unrecorded liens on these things. So little things like that. Next, you wanna know like, is there road access? How are we going to access the land? Ingress, egress, entrance, exit. Things How do you like find that. that out? So it's by the first way is look at a Google like satellite, right. Google, Google Maps, Google satellite. You can see, okay, that looks like a hardball asphalt road or mm-hmm. there's no road. Those are trails, mm-hmm. things like that. And then sometimes the title company can find that out for you. Sometimes you can see that on the legal description. And sometimes it's like, hey, title company, who is your, your ingress, egress attorney? Or her, who's your access attorney? So things like that. We were calling the county. The, sometimes the county will have it. Sometimes we were calling the, the zoning department, and it was all – Jeremy was like best friends with them. Too easy. So, yeah, your assessor <laughs> can tell you. Sometimes these assessors know the illegally 
subdivided land, and they'll tell you where to stay away from. Mm-hmm. So it's it's I can't say there's a cut and paste way. I've got a like I've got a due diligence yeah. checklist. It's yeah. like 19 things that we check everything, and we do the best we can. But yeah. there's no explaining to these sellers. It's like hey, I need to get this right. You don't have to. You do not have to convince your seller if they're motivated. You're not going to talk someone into selling at a discount that's not motivated. So there should be no convincing. Um, that, like we don't have to explain much. Awesome. Yeah, good question. Uh, Patrick, how do you get the offer amounts on a thousand mailers? Is there software to use? Yeah, I'm not using a particular software. That's kind of why I went through the process as microing down this as as little as possible. I'm starting with the the hot zip code Mm -hmm. and the hot size of land, and then I'm going to go and put it on Excel, or I can do it on like a white sheet of paper or that whiteboard that you had back there. I'm going to put the actual sales price, like of 35,000. Okay, that's 10,000 square foot lot. I'm going to divide 35 divided by 10,000. It's going to tell me that it sold for $3.50. And then, okay, where do I want to be? 50 cents on the dollar, 60 cents on the dollar. So then I could put that equation into Excel and make it way faster. Uh, so there's no software that I know of that, that you can do that. I mean, there's, there's companies like priced. No, I mean, like when you're, no, no, no. When you're sending out your mailers, yeah. you're not typing in. Oh, no. You're not typing in the, the, the price amount for every single piece of land. I assume there's some technology you use. Yeah. <laughs> Pe- Is it right here? Yeah, reipebble.com. Yeah, Ooh, they're, they're doing Here we go, mailers. Patrick. Yeah. What is this? REIPebble.com? Yeah. So it's uh it's a way, like for instance, I go and create here's a campaign I just did. Mm-hmm. I sent out a thousand fifteen mailers and that's their offer price on mm-hmm. about a thirty two thousand dollar. And piece they do of this land. automatically. Oh yeah. I, it's a thousand. That's it took incredible. me almost eight minutes to to send these out. Eight and minutes. Yeah. The land eight sh- minutes putting it in. So I assume you upload an Excel sheet to yes. them. And yep. then you put in percentage of, is it a percentage of the tax amount? Is it a percentage of the value amount? Percentage of value. I don't I don't really care what the taxes are because they're different in every county. Right. That's how we pay our fire department our but police. But we, we found a lot of the deals that we did were people that were behind on their taxes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The, the people that and are we behind on their that, taxes. Where did we pull that from? Where did I get it directly from? from the county. Got it. I, I usually call the county, either the tax collector office or the county treasurer, and say, hey, who is in charge of the people not paying their back taxes on their land, not paying the taxes on their property? Who's in charge of keeping track of that? Oh, that's Cindy. Okay, can I talk to Cindy? Hey, Cindy, I would like a list of all the people in the last three years that yeah. have not paid their taxes on their, on their property. And we may three work. years. Yeah, I just go Minimum, back three years. Not one year, just three Sometimes they can only give us one year. Right. And here's what Cindy's going to think. She's going to think that you want to pay those back taxes right. and make a return on investment for your money. So right. I explained it to Cindy. No, I want to buy the land and then pay the back taxes. Right. Oh, you want everyone that's been behind. Yes. So sometimes they can only give us one year. Sometimes they give us I feel us like there's years. software that does this. None that you, you found try reliable. On prop stream. Like sometimes prop stream shows it, but right. it's 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 not accurate. In it's my not opinion. always accurate. No. Um, awesome. All hundred. Will you make sure you put the <laughs> runner on for the landsharks.com? Check that out. The landsharks.com. Antonio asks, how do you skip trace the land buyers LLC to give them a call or text? That's batch leads I O or batch skip tracing. Oh, thank you. It's in the comments. Perfect. Batch uh, skip tracing.com. You can get it there or batch leads. Yeah. They, they can pull LLC's information. If for some reason it doesn't come up, Antonio, you got to go do a little bit of digging. Okay? You need to go in there, and you need to find out who is the managing member of that, um, of that uh, LLC and then reach out to them. Okay? That's, That's how you do it. such a great yep. job. Uh, Matt, if mo- we must have a lot of questions about land because we haven't celebrated one time yet. These guys are getting itchy fingers over there, ready to rock and roll. I'm getting an itchy hand here for this bell so we better have something soon <laughs> we have a lot of land questions but all right well let's give value and then we'll give some celebrations matt if if multiple parcels are connected to you to your to your to list you, to your list each of the parcels or do you have three agreements so i i get this question all the time i i just send one agreement and what's really cool is pebble does it for me now automatically where I was just saying, hey, if you have other properties for sale or other available land for sale, let us know about those as well. Now Pebble actually individually 
gives me like do puts it on there. Do people have money right now in this economy for vacant land? Have you seen any slowdown? Have you seen any increase? Have you seen it's just been flat? Have you over the last six years that you've been doing this, is there a difference now that, you know, inflation and interest rates and everything else, how has that impacted your business? So I called Kelly, my executive assistant, last week because I asked her, I was like, are we having a lot of land buyers stop stop making payments? She right. said, no, Brent, it's the same four we've been dealing with now for six months. And right. we get a late fee every month. Sure. So no increase in the last six months. In default. In default. Yeah. Everyone's making that payment. And it comes out automatically. It comes right out of their bank account. And if there's no money in their bank account, it goes to the next step and hits their credit card. Mm -hmm. So and then if So you have their bank account and their credit card? Yes. On everybody that you lend to? Every piece of land, yes. We don't wow. run credit. We don't do background checks. Right. If they make that down payment and the dock fee, we trust that they will keep paying for this asset. And if they don't, how do you get the property back? We Well, there's a couple ways. It depends. If we sold it through a realtor, we go through a general title closing, all that, and they get a deed of trust and a promissory note. Right. That is my security on that property. And usually we will not do that unless it's at least $5,000 down. Sure. And I've never had to foreclose on a piece of land yet since okay. 2016. Yep. Now, if they only put like $1,000 down or $1,500 down or a couple thousand dollars down, we will do what's called a contract for deed. Now, mm. you want to check with your local foreclosure attorney, not your real estate attorney, but your foreclosure attorney in your state or your county because they're going to tell you, okay, here's what you have to have as far as verbiage on your contract for deed. Here's what you want to have to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. And a contract for deed is simply as long as they pay, they keep enjoying the use of that property and when they pay it off then they get the deed then the deed we have 60 days to put uh, that deed in their name and we take care of all that sure. for them now sometimes they stop paying for that sometimes they call and say hey we're not moving to colorado anymore we don't want the land so i, I we we explain to them look you can probably sell the land here's the realtor we would use or we'll just take it back which we talk them out of that like we don't they've been paying for this for for months and months and months and most of the time we're profitable on yeah. it or sometimes we'll buy it back for them. Yeah. I just bought one back the other day for 400 bucks that the guy paid almost eight grand on. So wow. the, it's, it's kind of the dirty part about this business. People stop paying. Chris, and it's usually the people that didn't put a significant down. Yes. Anytime I would say I've but had. But I assume those properties are the ones that you bought for uh, a lower price anyway. Like hundreds of bucks. Right. Or, or free. I, I actually bought a piece of land three months ago with a pack of Paps Blue Ribbon. Like that's, he said, send me six bucks <laughs> on PBR. Mm. Yes. Mm, 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 like mm, the guy mm. on Venmo, like it had PBR as his, as his pitcher yeah. for Venmo. So he sold it to us for like six bucks. <laughs> we'll sell it. It's not a big one. We'll sell it for like four grand. That's like, so. how many PBRs is that? Is that like five PBRs? I don't Pretty know. Pretty good return on a pack of PBR. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So. All right. Chris asks, when I pull vacant land on PropStream, most of the time there's no direct address attached to the land because there's no improvement. So I can't skip trace the lot. Any suggestions to get around this? To skip trace that particular landowner, you just want to see what their name, the name of the owner is mm -hmm. and their mailing address. And that's where we upload it to batch skip. We right. upload it as a list. Yeah. So it's the mailing address. Yeah, mailing address and the name. And yeah. if it's an LLC, which was really cool. I mean, is it do, is it common that you like pull up a list of vacant land and they don't have formal addresses and they don't have a mailing address? Or There's always a mailing address because okay. they got to send the tax payments somewhere. That's what I thought. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I thought. So it shouldn't be a problem, Chris. Yeah. Have a land deal now. Had a home years ago that burnt down. Existing foundation is in buildable condition. Ever had this uh, scenario? Does it add or take away when comping with existing lots? It actually really helps your value, especially if you have an existing foundation, which I'd be very careful about that. Um, fires usually mess those up as well. But you have electric. You already have yeah. the water, yeah. like everything. That's amazing. Yeah, but would you? do you think it's worth more? Yes. Or do they have to go in and pull out that foundation and pay the cost to get that hauled and then put pour a new foundation and all that? Good point. Yeah, I would have that foundation inspected by an engineer because if you uh -huh. have to dig that up, right. now you're like, okay, the land's now worth 10000 right. It cost me 10000 to to dig this foundation up. Yes, now you have like a $0 lot, basically. Right. <laughs> In, in my experience, uh, Micah, um, it's, it, it costs more to get it removed. It's, it's actually easier for the builders and engineers to get uh, building permits for a brand new house 
uh, that's not just on the existing foundation, uh, that they just clear it all out, start fresh and new, at least here in Phoenix. It really depends on, I, I think you got to look at this from a timing perspective. Is it more or less time and cost for a buyer or a, a builder to use this to use this foundation or not? Because we used to have, I mean, you guys know, Raph, you know, um, it used to be one of those things where if you leave one wall up mm. in Phoenix, the, the permitting process was much easier and smoother, and then they changed that, and, and everybody's just bulldozing it, pulling everything out, and starting from brand new again. Yeah, the hundred percent. Also, one thing with burnt uh, properties, it will the the fire, the heat will impact the foundation. So it may look okay, but the integrity of it is off. So that's why engineering comes in handy. That comes from the fire background. It's good that we have a firefighter <laughs> here. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Awesome. So those get tricky. Uh, Femi just had an offer accepted for four, 820 acres in Gem, Idaho, I assume. Uh, seller is looking for 8 to 10 million. Realtor is saying we could sell for 24 to 27 million. Do you think we should? Well, first of all, I'm going to ring because you got that, uh, that locked up. So here we go. You guys ready? Oh, yeah. You thought it was just the bell. We got a yeah. whole band going on here. <laughs> ah, the Make sure day. you put in your celebration. So uh, <laughs> need, what do you think? We need some miraculous for What, 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 what do you think, Brent? Do you right. think that this is a situation that he should just talk to the realtor and, and get their best advice or subdivide it? What do you think? This is amazing, Femi. Congrats getting that locked up. I want to know what realtors sell, saying that. Is it the listing agent? Because I never believe what the, you know, the listing agent is saying. Yeah. The next step I would go is I would talk to the actual mayor in Gem, Idaho, Ooh. also the city planner, and see what do you guys want yeah. and where do you want wow. it? Wow. Because yeah. here's the thing, they might never allow that 820 acres to be touched. And then, you know, I think there's plenty of water out there, but mm -hmm. one thing we struggle with a lot in Arizona and Colorado is, okay, I've got 100 acres, but I have no water. Right. So things like that. So you want to see what is needed first, what do they want, because you, do, you don't want to go against the grain with them. Mm -hmm. You want to see how, talk to the mayor. how you can That's incredible. partner up, basically. Femi, talk to the mayor and come back and let us know what he said. That'd be incredible. That's That'd thinking really outside cool. the box right there. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. Well, it's really smart. 820 acres. Yeah. If you're looking at something Huge. at that purchase price. Big deal. Oh, yeah. Trevor. Trevor, <laughs> have our next subdivide at title and raise 815000 to buy and improve the 1,200 acres this week. Buy side, 2.7. Sell side, 5.1. Come on. Trevor Provance, a wild animal. He's one of our land sharks. He just comes on to get wins. He's part of your program. Yeah. Oh, he's, wow. He turns, he turns ranches into pastures. The guy has been doing this since, like, he was a little tiny boy. Really? And he's crushing it. Wow. Congratulations. <clears throat> uh, Santana B., can you subdivide a large plot of land to leverage an assignment fee? So I'm kind of reading this. I yes, know where he's coming I think, from. I think the answer is absolutely yes. Depends on how much time you have. Most definitely can. It takes forever. This is where you want to, once again, partner up with the seller. Mm -hmm. Say, look, we're going to be a partnership. This is going to be a long, at least six to nine month ride. I can get you more if you stay on with me. But my my plan is to do this, like, and actually explain your plan. That's that's one of the best ways, unless you're just walking around with tons of cash and yeah. you want to gamble it. <laughs> yeah. Um, one time I bought three points or two point seven seven acres. That was approved for 36 townhomes, right. and we pulled the trigger on it, $1.2 million. Yeah. Let me tell you where I made the biggest mistake ever. <laughs> what if the city wouldn't have approved it? Right. It is approved now, thank God, but we, we've owned it for almost a year and a half. Right. So yeah. just be, pre like, be prepared for those types of things. I like to bring the seller on board for those. And yes, you can get an assignment fee. You can talk to a local builder. DR Horton, Lamar, any of these people that are building out there, skip trace them. A lot of times the phone number is right on the internet. Yep. And you say, look, I'm in communication with the seller. I get it under contract. Ex explain to the seller what you're doing. Get it under contract and present that to that builder. And yes, they will give you an assignment fee. But a lot of times yep. these big builders like for you to buy it first. Yep. And then yeah, they Santana, here's the thing. Um, but most of them are not going to want to pay an assignment fee. They're not going to want to take your contract. They want to see you own the property and they want to deal with you. Um, not only that, but there is so much due diligence that goes into subdividing. So much due diligence. It takes forever. So when you have somebody... 
that, and this happens all the time. We talk to people all the time, whether it's in town on a small 3,000 square foot lot or if it's you know a three acre square foot lot. You could build a skyscraper on this. This is zoned for multifamily. You can subdivide this whole thing, and once you do that, it's going to be worth you know three million, and I want two million for this property where you can offer them two hundred thousand. Let's be honest. So really be wary. Really be careful with the people that are selling you the dream of their lot. Yeah. Okay? He's talking about sending out letters and people accepting 10, 30, 50% of what they're currently selling for, depending on how far out they are from, from like civilization. Right, so these are motivated people that want to get rid of their their lots. The people that go on this whole thing and they send you their plans <clears throat> for the lot, they send you all their work that they've done getting it pre-permitted or designed by an engineer and everything. Always want way more than it's worth. Oh yeah, I am telling you right now, it is a trap. It is quicksand. Avoid it at all costs. Yeah, Mr. Medina, I found an empty lot, maybe five k to ten k. Square feet in SoCal, nice. It's between two homes, and I found another between apartment complexes. Would those be considered a viable option to wholesale? A thousand percent, bro. Yeah. Like, Mr. Medina, if you can get those locked up, you're going to make a fortune. And also, Southern California. Also, find those guys that are flipping, and, and that, that would be probably a new builder that could leverage sure. an additional dwelling unit yes. in the back as ADU. well. Yep. So I'm telling huge. you, those are phenomenal. We've, we've made a fortune off of selling empty lots here in Phoenix. Phoenix, Glendale, Chandler, Gilbert, uh, even in Queen Creek. I mean, we've sold lots all over the place. They're phenomenal deals. People snatch them up. People really do it, especially if they're, zone, if they're in really hot areas. But especially if they're zoned multifamily, they're incredible. But you got to get them at a really good discount. you still got to find a good deal. Michelle, if vacant land in cities, how do you find ARV for those lots if not in areas? So no comps. You got no yeah, comps for vacant lots. If there's absolutely zero comps, you you don't find comps. Like you you can look on Zillow, you can look on Redfin, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and find a land specialist realtor that's close by, that's maybe selling in the city. That's why I started in the city, and you can kind of expand out. You know, get that land specialist realtor, not just any realtor, not someone that just holds a real estate license or your, your Uncle Bob. Yeah. That's the, not, not the person you want to talk to. That's who you need to ask. Like, okay, I've got 10 acres. It's in the middle of nowhere. Oh, yeah, I see comps from three years ago. It sold for 1,000 an acre. And that's all you have to go off of. And when I'm not sure about something, I go for, I like try and strike gold. Like, I'll get it. I'll mm -hmm. try and go for like, like, 10 cents or less on the dollar because it's just not being sure about it like anytime i'm unsure we will almost give them an offer that we know they will not accept and sometimes it's funny they do michelle depending on your area um if you're in southern california it'd be about 20 percent uh, but for most areas it's 10 percent right now of what a new home would sell for is what a builder wants to buy that piece of land for Okay, so if that if, if the neighbors are going for three hundred thousand, they're gonna want to buy that lot for thirty. That means you got to be at like five percent of that. You know what I'm saying? So just look at it from a percentage standpoint. And you can talk to builders. I mean, go you know trust me, but verify for sure. Go out there and speak to the actual builders that are putting together uh, you know building right now. Um, they're looking for deals. They're looking at ten percent on average. Used to be twenty. It's now down to ten unless you're in one of those really, really, really ridiculously hot areas that don't really get affected because the, the supply and demand is always in their favor, uh, they're at 20%. So uh, I would say most of the country is going to be 10, be at 5% of what, a, what the highest sale in that neighborhood went for. So if there's not any new builds in that neighborhood, look for the highest flip. Highest flip sold for 500000 You want to be at 5%. You want to be at 25000 and sell that for 50000 One thing we try and do is pre-sell those. Like we had the buyer yeah. already ahead of time. Uh, I have a buddy, uh, Bobby says, I have a buddy who is letting sell, uh, letting sell 30 lots between Colorado and Arizona. What do I do now? <clears throat> figure out what they're worth, you know, figure out what they would sell for on the retail market by more than likely. That's not going to be a Redfin area. You're going to have to find, see if you can find comps on Zillow that have sold. And then there, there's another place you can check too. 
is landwatch.com. Landwatch.com. For the more rural, vacant land. Landwatch.com. Awesome. Uh, do letters work better than postcards? Why and why not? Wendell asks. Wendell, this is like the, the perfect question. <laughs> I think there's more work up front in letters. We call them blind offers or the land offer letter. Yep. Because they work better because here's the thing. There's no time wasted. There's not a lot of, lot of phone talking. If you're like me in the beginning, I had no money and no time, so I didn't have time to negotiate with these and take a bunch of phone calls from postcards. I would send them specific offers. It would come back signed. I never had to even make a phone call. I could do it from my like government computer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I would buy it just like that. And then I would follow up with a postcard and I would get people that did never that never answered that letter. So I think that if we look at data. Is there is there a sequence to that? Yes. I'll do a I'll do a letter first and then twelve weeks later we'll do a postcard. But I, I started I caught every myself. four months. Yes. Okay. Roughly every four months we switch it up. But I caught myself because I said I think, but we looked at data because mm -hmm. you want to look at data, not drama, because I've made some bad decisions on my emotions before. Right. No one else has ever done that, I'm sure. But we looked at data <laughs> and we were buying more land from the actual specific land offer letters, which are letters than postcards. Right. Awesome. Data, not drama. The silly. Have you ever dealt with California owners that were victims of forest fires? How would I approach them? Very, very cautiously. Is the fire out? No, I've never, I've never <laughs> bought any out there. <laughs> not so. not so. that they're on fire, <laughs> right? No, I mean, I would say just, just, just be aware that they lost everything, and you just want to go in. And if you can, if you, you want to be the problem solver, the person. We bought a lot of burnt land in Colorado, and these sellers, mm -hmm. like one, was one week away from get a cert, getting their certificate of occupancy. Uh, we bought the land for thirteen thousand dollars. They had almost four hundred thousand into it, and that was one of the hardest like conversations. And oh, by the way, the, their uh, their builder's insurance policy had just lapsed a week prior. So, and they they gave it to us basically. They were mm -hmm. just just distraught. But silly, it just depends on if something was built on there. If it's vacant land, it's different. Just make sure it's somewhere where people would want to buy. Make sure that there's sales in the area. So how would I approach it? Go go and see if there's other burnt lots that have sold. And if there is, go for it. If not, then no. So if you're doing, if it's one of those things where you're like, hey, would you consider an offer on your property and you're calling on like an ugly house and they're like, no, and you're like, okay, do you have any other pr properties that you would consider selling, maybe even a piece of land? They're like, yeah, I got this land in California, but it just went through this forest fire. Do your due diligence. Look, look to see if there's any sales. If so, then you know, base your efforts off of that. But if not, just move on. Yeah, people buy burnt land from us all the Keanu! time. Keanu, Daniel Keanu, great to see you. We actually have like 24 acres under contract in SoCal. Come on! <laughs> that is bananas, Daniel. Get them sold. Or uh, maybe that's an owner finance. I don't know. Yeah. Probably an owner finance if I know you. So great to see you on the show, brother. Nice work, great, Daniel. great, great to see you. Uh, JVC closing on my personal house on Friday. Super excited. Here we go. JVC is lighting it on fire. I love that picture of you because that is pre-beard. I don't think I've ever seen you without a beard. And Whoa. it is a robust beard. Ooh. Yeah, robust. I need, like so, a, I need a noisemaker. Like, uh, I, like, I'll go get the drill or something. He's got one for you. Mike will get you one. Where's that uh, kazoo trombone? I'm, like, so go. unprepared. Uh, Adam, hey, guys, any advice for getting first deal on a budget? Yes, Adam. I'll tell you mine, and then I'll let Brent tell you yours from a land perspective. Uh, find an ugly house. Get the address. Get the phone number, right? If you have zero, zero, zero budget, you could try True People Finder or White Pages <laughs> Uh, and try to find the, the right phone number for him and call him up and ask him, uh, when do you plan on selling this property? That's it. You just have to ask enough people, when do you plan on selling this property? It's an open-ended question. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to allow you to have a really good conversation with the, um, with the property owners. And that's, it, it's just simple. Go after ugly houses and get big checks at them. Don't overthink it. Everywhere in every community in the United States, there are properties that need some love, that need some renovation. So just go around and find the ugliest properties that you can and call them up and ask them, when do you plan on selling this property? 
okay? If you need any, any guides, any resources, any tools, any downloads, ttpinsider.com. TTP Insider gives you literally like a million dollars worth of free downloads um, that, that we've either um, invested in ourselves as a company and or just through our experience. Uh, you can get that downloaded uh, complimentary. So definitely check that out, ttpinsider.com for scripts and resources and tools. Hey, Brent, for Adam, yep. um, people always forget to go to their title companies. Title companies will give you lists of absentee, absentee owners and, and that kind of stuff. It's like you guys aren't even on the show this, with this and week it, because so everybody's easy. asking Brent all these land questions. Yeah, Brent, Brent's <laughs> making it so easy. Go ahead, sorry, the, the, the title company. So, yeah, title companies for Adam. Uh, go to a title company. You can get lists there, and then sometimes they'll give you the phone numbers. Like, granted, the quality is not, you know, it's not going to be the same as if you get a skip trace, yep. but it's a, it's a way to get started on a budget. So. Awesome. So um, talk to your sales reps at the title companies. Awesome. Uh, you. Oh, Sorry. so. Yeah, land. You know, <clears throat> I would say I don't know what the budget is, but I, I, too, you know, I was the same way. I, like, had no time, no money, so I was really kind of <laughs> just limping along there. Um, so I went directly to the tax collector. Uh, Florida, we call it a tax collector. Colorado, we call it the uh, treasurer's office, the treasurer's office, the county treasurer. And I asked him for that, that list of people that were not paying their taxes on their property. That was the tax delinquent list. And then that's how I started with the individual letters. And we picked the people, we picked the lowest hanging fruit first because I needed these letters to count. Like I needed deals right away. So we picked the, the people that were behind on their taxes and out of state. And those were the first, the ones that got the letters first. And, you know, you could do those in your basement. Me and my wife, Emily, we used to literally <laughs> write the letters after we would put Zechariah. Well, in and bed. you've got the, you've got the letters in your, right there, landsharks.com forward slash LOL. Yep. You can print them right there. You can download them right there and then get to work with them. So uh, make sure, and it's the, the link should be in the comment section. You know what time it is, guys. It's, it's uh, which would you rather? Ooh. Uh, we've got two incredible <laughs> mansions to choose from. This is an audience participation. We need to know which would you rather own? Property number one? Whoa, oh. look at this. Raphael got smoked last week. All right. Yes, I, is, I lost this my is, title. This is a West Coast property in Encinitas, California really interesting architecture that is an actual house it's not just like a rendering right it's like they're roughing it so you've got uh <laughs> you've got this beautiful house here that's number one or do we go to the on the other coast uh brent bowers area in florida Ooh. oh what do we do redondo or encinitas what do you do number one put it in the comments section everybody are you going for number one here Modern, or are you going number two, more traditional, boat ramp, little putting uh, putting <laughs> green. Uh, looks like it's probably on some sort of inlet or a lake. Yeah. Um, so which one, number one or number two? Don't let anybody know. You keep it in your mind, and we'll let. Huh? Well, get out of here, Alondra. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll we'll just, we'll see what the audience uh, selects here after a couple more questions. And uh, Brent's got the uh, trombone kazoo. Right. There we go. What CRM are you using, Femi asks. Uh, so we use we use Pipe Drive. Pipe we, Drive. We had some developers like really critique it directly how we wanted it and develop it. And I don't recommend it. There's way easier CRMs out there. Yeah, yeah. Unless you've got a big team, Femi, I don't think you need a CRM. To be honest. Um, you can if you're like if you love everything in your computer and you love you know having everything at your fingertips and on your on your phone or, or a tablet or whatever else, um, great. But don't get lost. The CRM is where people get lost forever and then they don't get productive. They stay busy in their CRM and they don't be productive and it turns into a nightmare because you're not really doing deals. You're just kind of playing around with the technology. So really watch it. Technology is a huge distraction in our business. Yeah. I, yeah. I still write deals down in a white paper yeah. and then my team's like, why is it not in the CRM? Right. But that's, that's just how I operate. That's it. Uh, just closed on a deal in South Jersey last week. $11,033 bankruptcy situation. Took three months, but got it done. Congratulations, Chris. Here you go. That's awesome. Yes. 
Uh, Chantel, look at that picture. Wow, <laughs> looking great. Just got my first deal under contract in Colorado yes. Springs. Thank you for all your help, and here we go, Chantel. That's a great area. Great area. Yeah, you lived there for a while. Yeah. You did a lot of land deals there, a lot of wholesale deals, too. Marcellus Wallace Bowers, what's the largest assignment fee you've heard of on a piece of land? Heard of? And then let's talk about, let's put you on the spot. Biggest one that you've done on a piece so of land. So I'll start with me first. Um, I'm still on a piece of land. We are at 74000 That's the Ooh, highest Hold on fee. a second, yeah. boys. You know what's happening. So we actually did a uh, $99,000 assignment fee on a house, which yep. I'm, so, I'm still like a little hurt about this because it was a it house. It was a dirty, nasty, oh. stinky house. Okay. Yeah. Cat pee everywhere. Sure. But what's really cool about that $74,000 assignment fee, it was from a developer. This guy, he's 86 years old. He mm -hmm. lives in Sebring, Florida now. Yep. I'm actually looking at another 36 acres that he owns. So we're about to do another deal together. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's that with that. Um, one of my students, uh, I'd say one of the Land Shark students, eighty-seven thousand is the highest I've heard of yep. so far. Awesome. Now there's some that they've bought and made four hundred thousand dollar fees. Well, like, you have people making a million dollars in your group. Yeah. There's yeah. there's a, there's several. I mean, Trevor yeah. Probant. Yeah. He already chimed in here. Yeah. Awesome. So there you go. Marcellus, you can get big deals. The biggest one we did was 43000 Beautiful. From a piece of land right over here um, off of Glendale Road. Yeah. Uh, Ask Ben, dating advice for everybody, asks, still trying to close my first deal. I can't get my buyers to call me back. Well, nope. a couple of different things. Here you go. Um, you need to, if they're not calling you back, text them and just say, hey, listen, I don't want to bug you. I just want to see if you have interest in this property and keep calling and calling and calling and calling. You know, sometimes when we make 10 calls, we're like, oh, my gosh, I'm so exhausted. It takes 100, 10 times that effort. You know what I mean? And I don't know how, how you've reached out, but if you haven't reached out by picking up the phone and calling them, um, then it's a big mistake. If you're just sending out messages, DMs, posting and all that in this market, um, it's not enough. Your buyers that it's have not them, enough. Your buyers that have the most cash, they're not going to be the first ones to answer their phone. Right. Like they're not. They don't have time. Like you need. You need to figure out when they do have. Sometimes it's Saturday morning, before eight a.m. Yep. Ask Ben dating advice. Where are we at? Oh, we're doing the winner. Uh, okay. Doing what is the winner? Number one. Okay, or number two, I'm going number one, guys. Number Where one. are you guys number going? One. Number Values one, that. that is a nice house, though. This one won. What? Number two, we're all wrong. Nice ah, try. Wah, wah. Number two won again. We People love wrong. Florida. Maybe Hurricanes or not. Yeah, People yeah. love it. All right, congratulations, Florida, for winning. Yeah. <laughs> for beating California <laughs> this week. That's awesome. Maybe that maybe that first one was too crazy. Well, maybe that one was way too crazy. I really so like the clear water. Um, says there's no more questions. No more questions. Okay, got it. So we answered everybody's question about land, Brent. There you it's go. Amazing winning. So let me ask you this: You send out. Um, are you? Do you feel like you are? Most of your income is coming from a certain price range of properties. Like, is it the properties that are between five and twenty thousand? That that uh, that you get under contract, or is it the properties that are like five thousand and under? Our majority is under forty thousand. Under forty thousand, and that's that's what we're actually. But above what thousand? Like it, it could oh, be yeah. a dollar. From about it's about from ten thousand to forty thousand. Okay. So and and then my first deals though, let me like I I want to put this back in perspective of how I started because I know that a lot of people are just getting started on here. My first deals weren't forty thousand. They start I started with like. The first deal I ever bought was yeah. two hundred and eighty-five dollars. Right. How did I get yeah. it? That guy was years behind on the tax delinquent list. Right. And that turned that was a five. I sold it for five thousand to a realtor the next day, and then the next one was five hundred that I sold for five thousand. So those really added up. Yep. Got it. And when people are calling you from your direct mail, who's answering that? 
Uh, I've got two acquisition managers, Chrissy and Jen. They're both phenomenal. Do I they answer not... live or do they yes, let it go to the voicemail? Live only. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it goes to voicemail. Sure. But uh, we would ra rather answer live than try and reach that seller again. Sometimes it takes weeks to get them back on the phone. Yeah. Raf, what's your experience with Lane? <clears throat> Um, yeah, we've, we've done a, a bunch of land deals. They, uh, they are tricky. Like, uh, I've, I've gotten paid, uh, for rental properties, like stuff that I, that I own and rent because they, they didn't have the money with, uh, with land property, like up North. Yeah. So they were behind a month and a half and, and I have no money. So they, they traded you. They traded the land for, for the month. Yeah. So that worked. Wow. I mean, you see all kinds of interesting things. My question, uh, for Bowers is like, we're, we're seeing the trends in, in the real estate market, right? Like we have, you know, prices dropping and then sellers kind of be, you know, bogging down a little yeah. bit. Are you seeing on the land side specifically, are you seeing that stuff, you know, type of uh, stuff happen as well? Or Absolutely. What, what are you seeing there? Yeah, for the buildable, like infill lots, the ones that I showed with the Palm Bay example, yeah. where, where, where developers and builders were just like buying them up like crazy before July. Yeah, we've seen that slow down. Has it stopped? No. And what's really, what's really cool is you mentioned this, you started to kind of briefly mention this, but people are land banking. They're buying that stuff, the raw vacant land <coughs> in the middle of nowhere because they're looking at inflation of like seven to nine percent. So like I'm just gonna put that money right into land. Right. And so that stuff is selling better, especially the stuff wow. we're selling financing. Do you sell these things That's to, huge, to hunters? Do you sell these things to the again, those like preppers? You know what I mean? We yeah. we were selling land. We were doing this and we were selling land to people that just wanted to like take a trailer out to this lot in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, and blow stuff up like and, Tanneray. And just, I don't even know what they were gonna do. <laughs> you know, I think they just didn't like society or people yeah. or, or whatever else. Yeah. You know what I mean? All the above, the the paycheck to paycheck person, the iron worker, the semi, I, for, for some reason, my first like, I think year and a half in this business, I must have sold to like 10 or 12 truck drivers. It was really funny. And I could like sell the non-buildable stuff. Like the land that was like less than an acre yeah. in the middle of Colorado. They're tired of traffic. They just want to go out there in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> the prepper, uh, a college students, they have an RV, like a Class C RV. <coughs> mm -hmm. They buy a piece of land in every state they go to. It's it's just crazy. Why like, not cold call these people? I mean, why just send them letters? So I'm really, I, I like to set it and forget it. Kay. Like I'm looking more for the lifestyle side. I cold calling absolutely works. And yeah. you told me one time that uh, buying land. Cold calling landowners is like shooting fish in yeah, a five is. gallon bucket. Yep. So me and my team did it for a while because yep. I had a couple cold callers sitting around doing mm -hmm. nothing and it worked, but it was just, I, I liked just the, the whole male side of it. Cause it's like the steady Eddie. I can kind of predict. Listen, it. if you can have a nice return on marketing, like if you spend a dollar in marketing through your direct mail, how much <clears throat> do you think you're getting back from that? So here's, here's some examples for every, every $500 we spend, yep. we are locking up one deal. Okay. A couple of years ago for every 200 letters we sent, we would lock up one deal. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's just say $500 spent is making us at least 10 to $15,000. So it's a, almost a three X return. That's bonkers. I have yeah. a student that just told me the other day. That's he's, a 20 X. That's a 30 X. Way better so than I uh, properties. Five, I'm, I'm thinking 5,000. Yes, you're absolutely right. I said 500. Yeah. Yes. If I spend 500, we make 10 to 15. Sorry. I was thinking yeah, 5,000. That's 20 to 30 return, times return. See, I need a calculator for it. Like See, that's wild. Else. Well, I'm a, I'm a brainiac when it comes to math. <laughs> I can And tell. spelling. I can tell. And I'm glad and you writing. caught that. Because <laughs> People love it on this. Yeah, they love it. They can't get it's enough amazing. of it. amazing. Yeah. But I don't even know where I was going with this. But uh, So yeah. you're getting a 20 X return on it. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh. Marcellus, all right. Guys, if you have questions, Brent's here for another 17 minutes. So and ask him. I know that we get a lot of land questions. That's why I brought him on to the show. So I don't know if we already tapped out and everybody's like blown away and they're like, oh my gosh. Or they just went to your Hopefully they're went to land. land sharks getting your stuff right now. <laughs> Thelandsharks.com, guys. What are the most free, cost effective ways? to find land deals. So I already mentioned the tax delinquent list and actually sending a letter to those guys. But okay. one thing I like doing is when I drive my kids to school, I, I try and go a different way and I will see lots that oh, you yeah. know, people own and I will add it to my, my deal machine app. I actually drove by a lot the other day that had uh, two foundations on two different lots and there was weeds growing. They had mm -hmm. already compacted the sand, mm -hmm. not the actual concrete, but there was weeds growing out of it. I added that to Deal Machine the other day. It's just this amazing app that you can, it automatically mails it, but maybe you are on a tight budget. So 
write that address down and you need the time block for this because yep. you will forget after you, you drive home, you'll forget you're kind of getting your daily activities, write that address down and go on the county assessor site, figure out the name and the mailing address of those people and just send them a quick letter or you can you know, skip trace them with batch call them. and call them. Yeah, I would say, and this is um, in, in the really, really, um, the, the markets that are tougher, like you don't do as many deals, but the deals are bigger, the San Diego's, mm -hmm. the LA's, the Seattle's, the Portland's, I would say 80% of the deals that my students do are vacant land. Because we, we go hard That's after amazing. vacant land in those areas because oftentimes it's overlooked. Oftentimes it's it's overgrown and people don't really know if that's owned by the city or is that owned by like somebody just personally. And they find those opportunities and those are really, really, really strong. Yeah. So um, drive for dollars and getting, you know, getting those lots on your list are, are is really really important i don't care if it's commercial i don't care if it's residential yeah. if it's a vacant piece of land i mean it's shocking to me phoenix has been around not not as long as you know most most areas but i mean really established since the 60s and they're still in the middle of where everything started in our town there's still vacant lots I'm like what is happening here yeah what, what nobody's built anything on this or whatever it's absolutely incredible it's daniel funny. i'll ask one for for SoCal acreage, wondering if it makes more sense to go the development route or the glamping RV route. It's zoned for both, apparently. Any advice? Hmm. So you can, it's mixed. So you can you can do, I assume, a development route for for houses. I mean, people are really into the glamping and the RV stuff right now in the tiny houses, especially in California. So you just really need to look and see what what's the, the highest cash flow? and best yeah. use. The ROI, yeah. yeah, what's the highest and best use? And then it goes back to what does that mayor want? What does that city planner want there? Mm -hmm. Because there's something called public-private partnership. There might be grants for things like this. You get in there and start going to these development meetings. Now, these things are boring as all get out. But you've got to go sit through them and, and start talking to the county commissioners because – it's not what we want. It's what the people want. Their constituents that that vote them into these offices. Yeah. So reach out to them. It'll be a great relationship. Dimitri, I lovely how I know you Woo! do, brother. Just got two lots of sign for thirty eight k. Here we go. <laughs> That's amazing. Dimitri does this from Belgium. Belgium. He's That's done over four hundred land deals in Florida from Belgium. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Wow! Right. That's that's you guys got to connect. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Dimitri Van Camp. Yeah, he's he's incredible. Yeah, uh, plant based Maj. Uh, can we get a deal out of calling numbers for land for sale signs? Okay, so plant, you like literally read my mind because I was thinking about this a little bit earlier before we started talking about before we got on this live. I drove by on the way to the airport. I must have noticed three signs that were like grown up with trees over them and they're like falling down. And I was like, deal, assume, deal, deal. Right I assume there. this is in Florida. Yes, yes, yes. Because there's not a lot of plants growing over signs in Phoenix. <laughs> no, not Phoenix. Right? Not okay. Phoenix. I was thinking to myself, that is where you get a deal. That's like an ugly house. It's yeah. screaming, knock on my door. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when you're, whenever <laughs> the thought pops into your brain, Maj, uh, should I call this person? The answer is yes, 100%. Even if they don't want to sell, they could be a buyer. Even if they don't want to buy or sell, they could give you a referral. Even if they don't get, want to buy or sell or be your referral, they might have money that they want to invest. You never know. The more people you talk to, the luckier you are. It's a fact. Heck yeah. We're Hashtag. Our, we're trademark. Our cash buyers list today. Because we have a, a deal that we need three hundred sixty thousand for, so we're calling them and seeing if they want to lend to us. Right, like our cash buyers list. Like, why didn't we do this sooner? Genius, I love it, Jose. Uh, top niche lists, land lists to market to. You know, I, I think the the as niche as possible is definitely um, <laughs> the tax link list. Yeah. I've mentioned it multiple times, but also inheritedlandlist.com. Um, Micah over at US Lead List, they're pulling these things monthly. Like these people inherit this land. You want to be very careful about mailing that land. Be very sympathetic because, you know, some have probably died. They inherited. Um, yeah. So those are the two top niche. And then I, I really, once I find success in those areas, I'll pull the entire county land list. 
like all of it. And mail how much mail do you send out a month? It's not much. You're gonna laugh. About 500 a week. Really? 500 letters a week. 2,000 letters a month. Yeah. Sometimes Holy we'll spike cow. a little bit when I find a new area. Yeah. I'll mail the whole thing, but that's, that's our consistent. That's to keep our deals. Consistent. And that costs you about 2,000 a month. Yeah, if that. Right. Not quite. Right. Incredible. Wow. Are you double closing? <laughs> Veronica asks, great picture, Veronica. Are you double closing on larger fees? No, I don't do a lot of double closing. Um, we did with the developer one time because the developer wanted us to own it. Yeah. That's, I don't do a lot of, I just, I show them what the assignment fee is. And uh, most of the time I don't care if the buyer gets upset. And they don't usually, so I, I don't think there's any reason to hide it. Plus, I don't want two sets of closing fees. Right. Uh, if I'm going to double close, I'm going to buy it and then sell or finance it. Awesome. Diana, hello. I'm new to all this, really interested in learning. I've been looking around and seeing a lot of homes for sale by owners. How would I message them or tell them so we can get a contract? Beautiful. <laughs> All right. This is for. a question for me. So you see, you you just calm down, okay, yeah. Mr. Land. All <laughs> right. Let me let me help. Yeah. <laughs> let me handle this. So Diana, here you want to you want to call them up and um, you want to see if they have any current offers. Do you have any current offers on the property, right? And um, if they do, ask them: Are they planning on accepting those offers, or are they negotiating, or where they're at in the process? This just lets you know what your competition is. If there's a lot of competition, if they're like, "Yeah, I've got like 15 offers, and we're going for it," don't even worry about it. You don't want to be in a bidding war for those things. So that's the first thing. Second one is um, you want to see, you know, if if you don't sell this property for this price, because typically they're too high. For sale by owners are notoriously too high, and that's why they're for sale by owners, because real estate agents don't want to uh, list it at the price that they want, or you know they're trying to get as much money out of these properties as possible, and they have gr uh, uh, grand ideas, right? Uh, what is that? Something of grandeur. I don't know. Whatever. Um, so... They, they, um, they, they list it too high. So you want to ask, if you don't get this price, what's your plan with the property? And if they're like, well, I'll list it with an agent or I'll, I'll, I'll rent it out or I'll do something else, then you understand, okay, is there a lot of motivation here? Probably not, right? And if they're like, listen, I need to sell this thing right now, so give me your best offer and we'll talk about it. And then just ask them, you know, going back to what Brent was saying, if I can give you cash as is offer, make this as smooth as possible for you, you don't have to pay any commissions, you don't have to put another cent into the property, um, how much would you take, right? Open-ended question. And then they give you a price and say, is that the best you can do? And if it's still too high, if they still want too much, then say, okay, listen, and I know that this is a lot, so just go back and write all these things down so you can just kind of go step by step so that you feel more comfortable. Because I want to give you every, uh, every option that you run into um, so that you feel comfortable just asking the next question. And then the last one really is, well, you know, I can't get you your price in cash, but I can do it in payments. Would you be open to payments? And then just be quiet. And then just see what they say. And then you get into some creative financing type situations. That's a good one. So, one, do you have any current offers that you're negotiating? Is it still available, right? Two, if you don't sell it, what are you going to do? Three, for a cash as is offer, make it super smooth. What's the best that you could do? And then uh, four, oh, well, I can't give you that, but would you be open to payments? And that's the conversations that you have. And, and, and most of the people are going to be unrealistic. Most of the people are just trying to fish. Most of the people are just going to want, you know, way more than it's worth and just disqualify them. You don't remember, we're deal finders, not deal creators. So go after the people that truly have the motivation. Progress, not perfection. Um, one more thing for Diana on that note. Um, look at the, uh, uh, find out how long they've been trying to sell for, because that's going to give you a temperature of, of where they're at in terms of need, right? If, it, if they've point. been trying to sell that for a week, uh, they're going to be very, very, you know, blunt about saying, no, get out of my face. Uh, but if they've been trying to sell that thing for three months, now they're getting a reality check and they're holding on to this thing. Maybe they have payments on it. So the stress is building up, right? So how long it's been on the market for and how long they're trying to sell that property, uh, or they have been trying to sell that property is gonna it's gonna like dictate a lot of the uh, the uh, or the way the conversation goes. So keep keep that in mind. <clears throat> Flacco uh, six thirty says if I can't find any comps on a property even within the last year, does that most likely mean it's not a market that cash buyers would buy in? That's interesting. Uh, if you can't find a, uh, any comps on the property within the last year, well, you must be really rural. If you're not, if you can't find a single property that sold or, in the last year, and it would depend on how how far out 
you're, you're going. You know, obviously you want to start when you're comping. Do we have that, Matt? Do we have the seven steps of comping? Is that available or is that, yeah. is that buried? That might be buried. We'll have it available next week. Um, but you want to start out in the subdivision first, and then you want to start expanding half a mile within, you know, don't cross any major streets and then, uh, a mile and then two, if you have to, but if you can't find a single comp within <clears throat> two year within two miles in the last year, you were in the wrong area. What about Go rentals? to where the buyers are. Any rentals? Has, is there any rentals available in that area? Maybe you can do it from that way. Yeah. I feel like that's key. You guys have answered a lot of questions that way, which is check and see where there's buyer activity. A hundred percent. Check demand first. Mm. Right? You have to. You have to go where they're shopping. Yeah. You know what I mean? You could set up a stand and sell the, the most amazing barbecue, but if it's in the middle of nowhere where nobody's going to pass you by, you, nobody's going to buy your barbecue. You know what I mean? You go where people are buying barbecue, and that's that's where you want to go with all of your... I'm Man, these analogies are good today. Yeah. Uh, good. These, these are... I, it makes me want barbecue. Do you, now. Jeez, Do you bet your beans when uh, you're you getting barbecue? Your beans. beans and barbecue. You bet oh, your beans. Don't bring up crap. the beans. <laughs> don't bring that out. Uh, so, Vasily, so, I came across some vacant lots in my Sacramento market that's owned by the city. Is this worth going after? No. <laughs> have you ever bought anything from a city? Never. I'm telling you, Vasily, it, it is. I have tried so much. Uh, city of Phoenix. Um, uh, lots. They have a ton of them. I don't know what their plan is with them. I don't know what they're going to do with them. They've been vacant forever. I've tried to reach out. I've tried to give them offers. They're just not having it. Yeah. That Sometimes they'll release some, but if they do, it's typically grants for um, you know builders that are going to build some sort of uh, government housing or housing assistance. And they'll buy them slowly, too. If, yeah. you, if you look at uh, close to the 17 Central Phoenix area, there's a ton of just vacant lots with oh, gravel on them. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. And they're, I mean, you just see them taking over buying properties and then wiping out the house and then making it a, a vacant lot. So I know. I mean, they're, comp they're compiling stuff. A lot of times what happens with, with cities, yeah. And just, I, I don't know if it's long-term strategy, if yeah. they're just trying well, to, yeah. It, yeah. I Joshua know. asked, Brent Bowers, are you <laughs> buying land in small-town rural areas not close to big cities absolutely yes absolutely because you know there we saw a huge demand for this during covid and once again it's not to not to make money off of the war that's going on in ukraine but when there's like unjust and like uncertainty people they kind of go like out further out i should say more they want more space so yes, well, yes people yes. are escaping negativity, the negativity, people, and, and, yeah. and not undo negativity, but just the, what's going on in the world, and it's in front of you, and you're like, you know what? I just want to live my life out and and uh, in the middle of the, in A the middle of nowhere, lower <laughs> lifestyle. Yeah, me and my barbecue. Yeah, me and my. <laughs> and my beans. Beans and barbecue. John, when it comes to cold calling, how <laughs> would you start the conversation, John? Um, we got all the scripts at TTP Insider, so I highly suggest that you download the most effective cold calling script. Um, but you want to ask them, you, you want to call them by their first name, and you want to introduce yourself, and you want to tell them why you're calling. And then you want to get to the point. So uh, there's step by step. Whenever you ask somebody um, if they consider an offer on their property, or when they plan on selling their property, there's only six responses. So understand how to respond to those six responses, and you feel bulletproof when you get on the phone. It's a muscle. You told me this it is. years ago. Yeah. You have to, like, the first day is maybe 20 calls. And then the second one day is call. One call. Two oh. calls. Why did you make three me do 20 calls. the first, the first time? That? <laughs> well, because, you know, I was, I was a, a lot more aggressive in my yeah. youth. So, <laughs> no, but I mean, if, if, if somebody's never made a call to anybody and had a conversation, just get a hold of one person. Yeah. It gets easier. And ask them when do they plan on selling their property. You know, what do you consider an offer on your property? You know what I mean? And, uh, and and build it from there. But the, the most important thing, and I found this, is you can't let your brain, you can't give your, uh, your brain time to think because you'll hallucinate all the negativity and all the different outcomes before you even get on the phone, and that stops you from taking action. Yeah. So if you, and again, if you had that confidence, if you had that certainty that, that what you were doing, if you had that blind faith, like we started the show off, that if you talk to enough people, you're going to find opportunities. And when you find opportunities, you change your financial future. 
then you would just keep ma taking the action, keep taking the action every okay. single day and just don't let your brain get into it. Don't let your brain take over and overanalyze because it, it, when you put attention to the hallucinations that go through our head, it prevents you from actually providing value. And we are, we are compensated in direct proportion to the amount of value we provide. And so we can't provide value if we're just in our own heads. That's so true. There's a reason why in the pursuit of happiness, that movie, Will Smith did not hang up the phone. There you go. Like to save time, but also to stay out of his head. Those there you thoughts, go. man. That's it. And that's it. Bring it, bring it all in, man. Come on. Oh, Daniel just left, I think. Everybody come in. That is the oh, show today, part. guys. Thank you so, so much for participating. I, I if you're interested in learning more and, like uh, and really skip it to the front of the line when it comes to doing land deals, check out thelandsharks.com, thelandsharks.com. Uh, if it feels good in your gut, what you see there, sign up for a call um, with our team at Wholesaling Inc. and uh, working with Brent. And again, remember, keep your house clean, right? You're, you're literally your house in this house right here. Keep your house clean, protect your health at all times, and increase your value to the world, and you'll live an incredible life. I love you guys. I'll see you next week. What's up, mate?